when Dr. Gre when Dr. Ornish excuse me, published his uh, lifestyle heart trial years later, proving with quantitative angiography that coronary heart disease could be reversed, already opened up without drugs, without surgery, just a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle changes, I assumed it was going to be the game changer. I mean, my family had seen it with their own eyes, but here it was in black and white in some of the most prestigious medical journals on the planet, but nothing happened. Leaving me to wonder if effectively the cure to our number one killer could get lost down some rabbit hole and ignored, what else was there in the medical literature that could help my patients? I've made it my life's mission to find out. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world, so busy folks like you don't have to. <laughs> I then compile all the most interesting, the most groundbreaking, the most practical findings to new videos and articles I upload every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorship. Strictly non-commercial, not selling anything, just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love. New videos and articles every day, and the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. Okay, where did Pritikin get his evidence from? Well, a network of missionary hospitals set, out, set up throughout sub-Saharan Africa uncovered what may be the most important advance in health, according to one of our most famous medical figures of the 20th century, Dr. Dennis Burkett, the fact that many of our most common and uh, uh, major Western diseases were universally rare, like heart disease. In the African population of Uganda, coronary heart disease almost non-existent. You say, wait a second, our number one cause of death almost non-existent? What were they eating? They were eating a lot of starchy vegetables, starchy grains and greens, and their protein almost exclusively from plant sources and they had the cholesterol levels to prove it, actually very similar to what you see down here in the corner of uh, those eating uh, modern day plant-based diets. You say, well, wait a second. Maybe the Africans were just dying early from some other kind of disease, never lived long enough to get heart disease. No, here's heart attack, here's uh, age um, matched heart attack rates in Uganda versus St. Louis. Um, yeah, out of 632 autopsies in Uganda, only one myocardial infarction. Out of 632 age and gender matched autopsies in um, uh, Missouri, 136 myocardial infarctions, more than 100 times the rate of our number one killer. They were so blown away, they went back, did another 800 autopsies in Uganda, and still just want that one small healed infarct, meaning it wasn't even the cause of death. Um, uh, out of 1,427 patients, less than one in a thousand, whereas here, heart disease is an epidemic. This is a list of diseases commonly found here and in places that eat and live like the U.S. but were rare or even non-existent in populations centering their diets around whole plant foods. These are among our most common diseases, like obesity, for example, or hiatal hernia, one of the most common stomach problems, varicose veins and hemorrhoids, the two most common venous problems. Colorectal cancer, leading cause of uh, cancer-related death. Diverticulitis, the number one disease of the intestines. Appendicitis, number one, disease, number one cause of emergency abdominal surgery. Gallbladder disease, number one cause of non-emergency abdominal surgery, as well as ischemic heart disease, our commonest cause of death here, but a rarity among plant-based populations. And so this suggests that heart disease may be a choice like cavities.
If you look at the teeth of people who lived over 10,000 years before the invention of the toothbrush, pretty much, no cavities. Didn't brush a day in their lives, no flossing, <laughs> yet no cavities. Why? Because candy bars hadn't been invented yet. Right? So why do people continue to get cavities when we know they're preventable through diet? Easy. Right? Because you know the pleasure of dessert um, basically outweighs the cost and discomfort of the dentist chair for many people. And look, that's fine. As long as people understand the consequences of their actions, right? as a physician, what more can I do? If you think the benefits outweigh the risk for you and your family, then go for it. I certainly enjoy the occasional indulgence. I've got a good dental plan. Right? <laughs> but what if instead of the plaque in our heart, in our teeth, we're talking about the plaque building up inside of our arteries? Right? This is another disease that can be prevented by changing our diet. Now, what are the consequences for you and your family? Right? Now we're not talking about scraping tartar anymore. Now we're talking life and death. Right? The most likely reason that most of our loved ones will die is because of heart disease. Right? So, being at a McDougal event is the best Valentine's Day present <laughs> ever. It's still up to each of us to make our own decisions as to what to eat and how to live, but we should make these choices consciously, right? Educating ourselves about the predictable consequences of our actions. Coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, begins in childhood. By age 10, the arteries of nearly all kids raised on the standard American diet already have fatty streaks, the first stage of the disease, and then these plaques start forming in our 20s, in our 30s, and then can start killing us off. In our heart, it's called heart attack. In our brain, the same disease is called a stroke. If there is anyone here in the room today, older than age 10, <laughs> then the question isn't mm, whether or not to eat healthy to prevent heart disease. It's whether you want to reverse the heart disease that you already have. Is that even possible? You know, when researchers took people with heart disease, put them on the kind of diet followed by populations that did not get heart disease. Their hope was to slow the disease down, maybe even stop it. But instead, something miraculous happened. The disease started to reverse, to get better. As soon as patients stopped eating an artery-clogging diet, their arteries started um, uh, opening up. Their bodies were able to start dissolving some of that plaque away without drugs, without surgery, even in some cases severe triple vessel heart disease, arteries opening up, suggesting that their bodies wanted to be healthy all along, but were just never given the chance. <clears throat> this improvement in blood flow on the left you see up here, if you can see this is after just three weeks eating healthy. Let me share with you what's been called the best kept secret in medicine. The best kept secret in medicine is that sometimes, right, given the right conditions, our body can heal itself. You know, if you whack your shin really hard on a coffee table, and get all red hot, swollen, inflamed, right? But we'll heal naturally if you just stand back and let your, you know, you know, body's, you know, magic take its place. But what if you kept whacking your shin the same place every day, in fact, three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? <laughs> it never healed. You go to your doctor, you'd be like, oh, my shit hurts so bad. You'd have no problem. Whip out their pad, write you a prescription for painkillers, right? You're still whacking your shin three times a day. Oh, it's still really, oh, but feels so much better with those pain pills on board. Oh, yeah. Thank heavens for modern medicine. 
right? You know, it's like, it's like taking nitroglycerin for crushing chest pain, right? Tremendous relief, but not actually treating the underlying cause of the disease, right? Our body wants to come back to health if we let it, but if we keep re-injuring it three times a day, it may never heal. You know, it's like smoking. One of the most amazing things I learned in all my medical training was that within 15 years of stopping smoking, your lung cancer risk approaches that of a lifelong non-smoker. Isn't that amazing? Y your lungs can like clear out all that tar and eventually it's almost as if you never started smoking at all. And every morning of our smoking life, that healing process started until wham, our first cigarette of the day. Re-injuring our lungs with every puff, just like we can re-injure our arteries with every bite. When all we had to do, the miracle cure, is to just stand back, get out of the way, and let our body's natural healing processes bring us back towards health. Now, sure, you could choose moderation and hit yourself with a smaller hammer. <laughs> but why beat yourself up at all? We've known about this for decades. American Heart Journal, 1977. Cases like Mr. FW here, such severe angina, couldn't even make it to the mailbox. Then uh, started eating healthier. And a few months later, climbing mountains, no pain. Now there are some fancy new anti-angina drugs on the market now, cost thousands of dollars a year, but at the highest dose, they can successfully prolong exercise duration as long as 33 and a half seconds, ladies and gentlemen. It does not look like those choosing the drug route will be climbing mountains anytime soon. See, plant-based diets, not just safer and cheaper, but can work better. Heart disease is our number one killer. Killer number two is cancer. 